Math 31, welcome to examples 9 and 10. We're going to do both of these in the same video. And this is where we're going to look at recursive formulas for an arithmetic sequence. And if you remember from the last section, a recursive sequence, it's still a sequence, right? it's a list of numbers where each term is defined as an expression involving previous terms. Which means when we were doing recur recursive formulas in 9.1, we needed our first term or potentially first few terms, and then every term after that was defined in terms of the previous term. All right, so we're gonna use the same idea here. We're gonna have a starting term and then a recursive formula. And when I say arithmetic sequence, again, arithmetic, you know there's gonna be a D involved, right? And we're still making lists, sequence, lists, okay? So the recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence with a common difference D is your current term equals the previous term plus your difference. And we say n greater than or equal to two because as long as this is two or higher, as long as I have at least one term as a starting point, we're good to go. All right, so let's take a look. We're gonna write the recursive formula for this arithmetic sequence, two, 12, 22, 32, 42. Now, even though it says arithmetic sequence, I could spot it here because I can see I start with two and I'm adding 10 each time out. Oops, I just dropped my pencil. So again, in terms of important things, here's a sub one, right? We know that's two. I also notice that D is equal to positive 10. And those are always good things to take note of. So for a recursive formula, you need your first term. You need to give me a starting point. All right, now for a sub n, if I follow this out, this should be a sub n minus one plus d, which is 10. And, and quite literally, that's it. There's nothing more to it than this. It seems maybe like there should be more, but that's it. I want my starting term, and then I want every term after that. This 10 kind of looks like it's floating. All right, so a sub n minus one plus 10. Now again, this is the recursive formula. which is great, that's what I was asked for. I just wanna juxtapose that with the explicit formula. All right, so if we had done the explicit formula, that's this one. All right, so you would have told me this was two plus n minus one times 10, and you said you would have distributed the 10 and said this was 10 n minus 10. So ultimately you would have said this was 10 n minus eight. This is the explicit formula. And I just want us to start talking about how both of these are working. All right, if I was going to plug in n equaling one here, 10 times one is 10, 10 minus eight is two, great. If I was gonna plug in two here, a sub two, 10 times two is 20, 20 minus eight is 12, great. So that is working. But let me show you how this works here. We, if we were gonna plug in n equaling one, I go to my first term, right? So a sub one is two. Now let me show you this. Right, I'll do it right here. If I did a sub two, that would be equal to a sub two minus one plus 10. Well, two minus one is one, so this is a sub one plus 10. We knew a sub one was two, two plus 10 is 22. Right, so a sub two was defined in terms of the previous term. We were recursing back to a previous term. So this is the recursive formula, this is the explicit formula. This was the one that was asked of us, but I just want you to see what we're looking at now and how it relates to what we have done in examples one through eight. Okay, so let's, let's practice this again. All right, so let me scooch the page up. All right, just a bit so we can keep that recursive formula in sight as we go through this example, all right? So here we go, it says, write the recursive formula for this arithmetic sequence. All right, there's gonna be a D, and I've got a list of numbers. So first of all, I see a sub one is 20. That's great, that's gonna be my starting point. A sub one will be 20. Whenever you're writing a recursive formula, you need a starting point. You need at least one term defined as your starting point. I also can see and we did this problem way back in example one, I can see D is equal to negative seven. 
So if I want to work my recursive formula, I know a sub n will be the previous term, because that's what this means. The current term is the previous term, um, and what was my d? Minus 7. And as long as n is greater than or equal to 2, we're good to go. And that is it. That is my recursive formula. All right, now I'm going to scooch this up just so we have some space to take a look at the explicit formula just to compare and contrast. So this is the recursive formula. All right, now to contrast that, let me get these, I'm going to write this off to the side. So a sub 1 was 20 and d was negative 7. Let me give myself some space here. If I wanted to write it explicitly, and again, I wasn't asked to write it explicitly, I, I just want you to see the options. I could have again done a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So in this case, that would be 20 plus n minus 1 times negative 7. If I distribute that a little, I've got 20 minus 7n plus 7. So I've got a sub n equaling, it looks like, 27 minus 7n. So let's just play a couple of these out. If I did a sub 1, that's 27 minus 7, which is 20, check, okay? Over here, a sub 1, they're just telling me it's 20. Okay, great. Let's try a sub 2. a sub 2, the, oh, I didn't write this out, the explicit formula way, All right, a sub 2 would be 27 minus 7 times 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14. 27 minus 14 is 13. That checks out. All right, here, a sub 2 would be a sub 1 minus 7, right? Because this would be 2. This subscript is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so this subscript would be 1. So we would have a sub 2 is the term before it minus 7. Well, what was the term before it? 20. And what is 20 minus 7? 13. All right, so you've got the explicit formula for arithmetic sequences that we talked about in examples 1 through 8, and you've got the recursive formula. All right, so that's going to wind out or end out section 9.2. So I hope we're more comfortable with the common difference for an arithmetic sequence. That's just the letter D. We're comfortable writing out terms of an arithmetic sequence using explicit formulas for arithmetic sequence and using the recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence. All right, we're going to move on into 9.3 where we're going to get our first look at the geometric sequences. And that means instead of adding or subtracting a term, or excuse me, adding or subtracting a number to get from one term to the next, we're going to multiply or divide by a number to get from one term to the next. All right, I'll see you in a few games. Bye.